Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we're going to be working on an A1707 MacBook Pro that has no power. This is a 15-inch MacBook Pro Touch Bar that was produced between 2016 and 2017. Let's see if we can figure out why this MacBook Pro has no power and make it work again. First thing we're going to have to do here is open this MacBook up. Let's get it put on the table, flip it over, have it on the desk, get our pentalobe screwdriver because Apple wouldn't be Apple if they didn't have a proprietary screw required to open the bottom of the machine. I don't know if I should say proprietary, perhaps rare. I haven't actually confirmed whether these pentalobes are specifically proprietary to Apple or rare. Either way, kind of a dick move given that a Torx T3 would have been just fine for these bottom screws, but rather than that, they chose to go with this thing that you can't get in any hardware store so that if you actually manage to spill liquid on your machine, you can't unplug the battery in time for it to not kill everything on your machine. So the whole thing with liquid damage is you want to make sure that there's no power going to the machine, so you want to unplug power to it as soon as you can so that when you do decide to get it treated, you don't have that continuous decay that will have occurred. And with these products, by the time your screwdriver comes in the mail, your battery's already been plugged in for probably two to four days, and at that point, you're kind of already screwed. But that's Apple. So let's... I just had a rubber band shot at me. It looks like we're going at 20 volts, but 0.02 amps. See that? 20 volts, but 0.02 amps. That's 20 milliamps. So we're getting to 20 volts, which means the CD3215s are speaking to the charger and telling it, I'm a MacBook, I'm not a GoPro or a phone, give me 20 volts, not 5. That also means PP3V3 underscore G3i has got to be there. But we are stuck at 20 milliamps, which means this is not turning on. So the first thing I'm going to want to do here is turn on Paul Daniels' amazingly beautiful multimeter software. You can ask Paul Daniels for this type of software by going to pldaniels.com or following his YouTube channel at youtube.com slash 19pld73. That's 19pld73. PP Bush G3 Hot is a 15.6 ohm short to ground. Now, why did I just measure that spot? Well, that's a great question, and you may not be exactly sure why I measured that spot. Let's open up a schematic for an A20-00281 board. Schematics you're going to have to find online on your own. The software to, to read them with, you can find at pldaniels.com. Don't delay. Check out Paul Daniels' software by going to pldaniels.com today. That's pldaniels.com, pldaniels.com. In this list, when you, first thing is when you don't have a power rail, first thing you do is if you have a no power situation, likely one of the power rails in the machine is missing. So you know how on a desktop PC, when you see those Molex connectors or stuff going from the power supply to the components when you're building a PC, you got the yellow wire, the, let's say you have yellow wire, you have the red wire, and I believe the yellow is going to be 12 volts, the red wire is going to be 5 volts. You have different power rails in a desktop, and the same thing is true for a laptop. So on a laptop, if I'm getting no power, what I like to do is I like to check the power rails. And the power rails used to be listed in the beginning of the schematic on the diagram on page 3 and then also on page 6. Now, because Apple, the most important part of the system is going to be listed on page 107 or 109 because, again, Apple. So we scroll over to page 109. And we have a list of rails. So the different rails are going to come on at different times. G3 hot rails are always on. S4 rails are on when the machine is hibernating. S3 rails are on when the machine is sleeping. S0 rails are on when it's on. So, for example, the G3 hot rail, that's, let's say, the power to charge the battery. Because you want your computer to be powering the battery regardless of what it's doing. Always charge the battery. S4, hibernate. Only have this rail be on when the machine is hibernating. So you don't want the keyboard or the trackpad to be taking power when the computer's off, right? It's a waste of electricity. But you want it to be on somewhat when the machine is hibernating so that you can hit the keyboard or the trackpad and wake it from hibernation. It's not going to be woke from hibernation if it's not getting power. S3 rail is going to be something like memory. You don't want that to be on when the computer's off, but you also don't want that to only be on when the computer's on. Because when you put the computer to sleep, that's suspend. The CPU doesn't have to be on, the screen doesn't have to be on, the fan doesn't be have to be on, but the memory has to be on so that whatever you, you had going on in your desktop, whatever programs you had open, stay open because they were suspended to memory. And the next is the SO rail. That's the rails when the machine is always on. So think of it like a little pyramid. So you have G3 hot, S5, S4, S3, SO. And I checked the first G3 Hot rail that was on this list here, PP Bus G3 Hot. Now, when I right-click on PP Bus G3 Hot, it will show me everywhere in the schematic that it shows up, and I can see that it shows up right over here. That's where I measure with the multimeter. And it also says over here, voltage, 
13.1 volts, so I know what I'm, I'm supposed to get there. And obviously I'm not going to be getting anything because when I check over here with my multimeter, I get 16 ohms to ground, which means that there is a short circuit to ground. Now, in the document that I have listed down below in all the videos, there is a guide that tells you if you're not getting the power rail that you're expecting to get, why? What are the causes? It could be that the enable is not present on the chip that makes it, just like a light switch. You know, the light switch has to be flipped on for the light to work. I'm not going to blame the electrical in the store. I'm not going to blame the outlet. I'm not going to blame the bulbs. I'm not going to blame the fixtures if the light switch is switched off. Second thing it could be, the chip itself is bad. Third thing it could be, the rail is being created. The chip is working. The enable is present, but it's being shorted to ground. Fourth, everything there is good. The chip is on, the enable is present, but the input voltage is supposed to go into that chip is not present. So if you don't have the in, you don't have the out. Here, case three is true. We have a short circuit to ground, 16 ohms. That means everything that's supposed to be going to that power rail is getting sent to ground before it gets where it's supposed to. So we're gonna take this board out of the case and see if we can find this short on PPBush G3 hot. So the board is out and on the desk. Now, what do we do from this point? Let's take a look over the board and see if we can get an idea of why it's not turning on before we use any other kind of tactics. Just gonna see what the good old eyesight gives us. That is a beautiful microscope image. By the way, I just wanted to take this time out to s give a real heartfelt thank you to every single one of you that bought one of the 40 limit, you know, there was, yeah, 40 limited edition Rossman microscopes with the proper trinocular camera adapter so that the image looks nice and in focus and beautiful like this one. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I will not be selling another one of those until all of that crap goes away. But still, just thank you very much for all of you who... Thank you. I uh, appreciate it very much. For those, there are 40 people out there that can start doing YouTube streams with this level of microscope quality, and that's awesome. I, I hope you use it for amazing things. Just gonna go through this board. Hello, That little cap really did not want to be here anymore. Looks like the cable is for the camera. So Copaz broke the motor and the camera of my drone so far. The camera worked before I sent it to you. The only thing that didn't work was the rotor. No, seriously, the camera actually did work before I sent it to him. The only thing that didn't work was the motor. Copaz, what the fuck you do to my drone? Wait, he's certified DJI repair. He's certified DJI repair. That's what happens. See, this is what happens when you send your device to a certified shop. I sent my DJI Tello to a certified DJI repairman. Rip my camera. 
Do they do something like Apple where the cable for the rotor, I mean for the cable for the propeller, the motor is right next to or wrapped around the camera cable with glue or something like that? Because if that's the case, then it's, it's understandable. Alright, now we're going to find a board to grab this off of. And because I'm too lazy to remove the display connector and the display cable, because that would require removing two screws, finding a screwdriver, finding a magnet to put them on, I mean, just saying it out loud is making me sweat. I can only imagine actually doing the work. I'm going to be using the soldering iron by itself to put this new cap on, and I'll show you how I do it. It's glued, otherwise the ribbon would pop out after a single crash, and people would be raging for no image on camera after crashing. It happens a lot even when they're glued. Alright, that makes sense. That makes sense. I understand it. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I only put solder on one side. Notice that? See? Solder is on the, on the bottom, but not on the top. So the reason I did that is because one of these I need to make level. So this has to be made level. This is really hard to do under a microscope. Usually I would do this without the microscope, but then you wouldn't be able to see it. So I kind of have to do it this way. Let's see if possible to do this sideways. Like Paul, Paul Wall would say, sitting sideways. Is it possible to do this sitting sideways? Okay. And now we solder on the top. Now this side over here is going to be closer to flat against the board. So this is how you could, let's say you didn't have a hot air station, because something one of you asked in the last AMA stream, like what do I do if I don't have all the tools, or what if I don't have the budget to have a hot air station? Well, you could have you bought a cap off a of mouser, and you could have just kind of soldered it in like this. I didn't, even though this is an SMD component, I didn't need, I did not use a hot air station to put this in there. Now is it straight? Not really, but do you think anybody cares? They're just going to notice that the Apple Store wanted 1500 to fix this machine and that you wanted, you know, 100 to 500 to fix. That's what's going to matter. So, not perfect, but clearly something that's doable. If And if you do are truly triggered by that the way I am right now, honestly, a little bit, you could just use hot air to flow it into place. I'm just going to remove that display cable. before I burn it, and we just flow that into place with the hot air station. But, uh, you know, the hot tweezers that Jesse uses, they're really good and they have their use, but just not for a cap that's that large. And for stuff like this, it really is handy to be able to do it with a soldering iron. This way you don't have to serve the stuff around with heat, if that's an issue. Let's see what I do. One side I put solder on, I put it down, and then it's flat on the board, whereas it's not going to be flat on the board if both sides have a bump. And with the soldering irons, it's not hot tweezers. I can't make a, I can't hit both sides at the same time. So that's why I put solder only on one side, not on both. And now I pushed it down on the board. There's going to be a little bit of excess solder under there. It's fine. I added some flux. I'm just going to use my iron once it heats all the way up and get that out of there. No excess. Beautiful, beautiful. So, I'm just going to put the display cable back on there. And then this thing's going to work. Yeah, and I think it's really important to throw these little tidbits on there that can help you to do some of the work that we do, even if you don't have the exact tools. Because one of the things I used to hear nonstop and it drive me nuts, Lewis, I don't have a hot air station. I would replace the fuse, but I don't have a hot air station. And I, you don't need a hot air station to do everything. Do you, obviously, you need a hot air station if you're going to you, know, you want to redo an SMC or something. Duke would argue that. He would use a paint stripper, which I say no to, but Duke is crazy. Do you believe Duke when he says that he uses a paint stripper for all of this? Uh, only because I 
as I saw him use a hot air station, he was very uncomfortable. Yeah, he did not. F he wasn't up to using the hot air station. So we're gonna see if this thing gives us a boot sequence now. Just clean off alcohol from the desk. Clean the desk with a little bit of Windex. Okay, so we're just gonna see if we get an Apple logo. This thing boot. Does it turn on? Does it? The first thing I want to do, obviously, is I want to see if it takes more than 20 milliamps it was before. It was taking 20 milliamps because the PP Bush G3 hot circuit was turning itself off rather than, to, than sitting there and trying to deliver current into the short. Just get any of these cables with metal in the top off. All right, it looks like it's taking 1.5 amps at 19.9 volts. So we should be seeing an image shortly. It says the computer has thin lines running across the screen. They disappear and seem to be functioning properly. Then the computer would not turn on. No power, not a hint of any power even when plugged in. So the lines across the screen, that's going to be something else. But I imagine perhaps the lines happened across the screen right as PP bus was shorting to ground. Maybe that's the way the machine looked when it crashed. By the way, you can see that there's an Apple logo. This machine is turning on. It is taking 1.3 amps at 19.9 volts. So we were taking, at 19.9 volts, we were taking 20 milliamps. That tells us that the CD3215s are speaking to the charger and telling the charger to put out 20 volts, not 5 volts for a GoPro or 9 volts for a phone, but 20 volts for a MacBook. That tells us that A, our CD3215s are working, and B, PP33 underscore G3 hot, which is the power required for the CD3215 needs to turn on is functioning and working as it should. So we shouldn't look at PP33 underscore G3 hot, but rather we should check all the other PP3, all the other G3 hot rails to ensure that they're working. And the next rail after PP33 underscore G3 hot is going to be PP bus G3 hot. We checked that rail. We had a short to ground. We didn't have to measure voltage or anything like that. And immediately when we first took out the machine, what we were able to spot was a cap on PP bus G3 hot that was obviously short as a ground without having to measure with a multimeter or replace that cap. We put a new one on. I showed you how to do it without having to use a hot air station just in case you're on a budget and you only have a normal soldering iron. It's you don't need any sort of crazy special tools to do what I do in some cases. And uh, it works. So that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of what makes this stuff uh, worth doing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Paul, what are you doing today? Taking forever to get from one end to the other with this drone. They're too slow now. Do you have it on fast mode? Yes, that's fast mode. It's so slow. I'm still not to the wall. There, I'm at the wall. This place is huge, Paul. I didn't even go into your office. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. And now, can you shoot it? But it was like, yeah. They should demolish a bike-sized hole in your office. A bike-sized hole in the office. I'm going to ride into work every day. I think... I need to have a button on my bike that opens the door so that I could just ride.